Jin the whispering bone groves of wisteria, where moonlight draped the trees in skeletal lace, lift a girl spun from starlight and shadow. Alara, her name meant dawnlight, but she'd never witnessed true sunrise. Wisteria was a land perpetually cloaked in twilight, ruled by the capricious moon witch. Legend spoke of the sunstone, a heart of fire trapped within the witch's tower, its stolen light casting the world in endless dusk. Alara dreamt of dawn. She craved the warmth she'd only felt in whispers of prophecy passed down through generations. Her grandmother, eyes reflecting the dimmed world, would tell tales of golden fields basking in sunbeams, of birdsong that rivaled even the wind's lullaby. Each story ignited a spark of rebellion in Alara's heart. One night, the whispers carried a different tune. They spoke of a forgotten path, woven through the bone groves, leading to the moon witch's tower. Hope, sharp and fragile, pricked at Alara's soul. Ignoring her grandmother's pleas, she embarked on the treacherous journey, guided by the spectral glow of fallen moonflowers. The path was a nightmare. Thorny brambles snagged at her cloak, whispered warnings echoing in the breeze. Wispy, moon-drum creatures with eyes like embers materialized and vanished, testing her resolve. Fear gnawed at her, but the promise of light fueled her steps. Finally, the witch's tower loomed ahead, a spike of obsidian silhouetted against the endless night. Guards, hunched shadows armed with scythes, patrolled the base. Alara, small and nimble, used the whispering shadows as her cloak, slipping past unnoticed. The tower's interior was a labyrinth of bone-carved arches and moonstone mosaics that bled into shimmering illusions. Alara climbed, each step a test of her courage. In the highest chamber, bathed in the pale glow of a captured moon, she found the sunstone. It pulsed with a heat that kissed her fingertips, an ember held against the night. As she grasped it, the tower trembled. The moon witch, a figure draped in twilight silks, materialized from the shadows, her eyes like twin moons blazing with fury. Child, she hissed, voice, like the rasp of dry leaves, you tamper with forces you cannot control. A light, casting golden defiance across the witch's face. This world deserves more than your borrowed glory, she declared, her voice surprisingly steady. The witch unleashed a storm of shadows, twisting and writhing like malevolent serpents. Alara, bathed in the sunstone's light, met them with a dance, honed by her lonely journeys. She twirled and leapt, the stone a beacon in her hand, banishing the encroaching darkness. With a final, earth-shaking roar, the witch vanished, leaving behind a deafening silence. The sunstone thrummed in Alara's grip, radiating warmth that spread outward, pushing back the twilight. Golden fingers of light crept across the bone groves, chasing away the shadows, painting the world in hues Alara had only dreamed of. Birdsong, as vibrant as the newfound sunlight, filled the air. Flowers, long asleep, burst into bloom, their petals shimmering with dewdrops like stolen stars. Alara, bathed in the light she had brought forth, stood on the tower's peak, no longer a girl of twilight, but a woman of sunrise. Wisteria had woken, and she, the starlight weaver, had become its dawnbringer. But her journey was far from over. The whispers had spoken of a prophecy, not just of light, but of balance. The sunstone, powerful as it was, needed the embrace of the moon to sustain its magic. Alara knew, in the heart of her newfound dawn, that her true task had just begun. The story fades on Alara's silhouette, poised against the horizon where dawn meets dusk. Her future, a tapestry woven with light and shadow, awaits, beckoning her forth with the promise of an even brighter sunrise.